And that's us live for this week. We are about half of us are here. Um, there, there are more people yet to join, hopefully. Uh, we will put out the link to join us if there are still empty seats after about 20 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, let's kick off the traditional way. Bill, what have you been up to this week? We can't hear you now. You've got we've got your camera, but we lost your sound. <laughs> Bill will be performing this week in the medium of mime. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Uh, I was saying I'm I'm in the middle of doing a preliminary audit for a website to. Uh, See if we can get them to hire us as SEOs. And oh. I'm looking around, seeing what works, what doesn't work, what's missing. Uh, it's a huge website. I actually enjoy those. I I had one the other week. I started to run a, a spider over it using uh, Zenu. Ten and a half hours it took to run with 30 threads simultaneously running. Um, <laughs> I, d I don't like to ever go above that. I usually turn it down to about 20 just so I'm not in any danger of affecting site performance. But 30 is about as high as I'll dare go. And yeah, ten and a half hours to run. <laughs> wow. wow. Well, I found the sitemap index in the robots.txt file. And I went to that so that I can look at the files listed to see if there are any hreflang files because there were multiple languages in the partial crawl that I had done when I decided to stop with 700 URLs left to crawl, 700,000 URLs left to crawl. Uh, hmm. So I figured if there wasn't an hreflang site map index uh, it would be something they would want to add. So the first XML file I checked was completely missing. It was listed in the sitemap index, but it wasn't on the web. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's let's point that out to them and say, okay, you, you need us as, as uh, your SEOs. How many languages is the site in? It, uh, it's in English for at least five different regions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, US, UK, Australia. Uh, and that, that's when it really does get important because, of course, if you don't get your tags right there, you are going to have serious problems with your content, which, although it's not going to create penalties, is not going to be very good for your site, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, Christine, you were in early today, so what have you been up to this week? Um, my son got baptized on Saturday, so that was a big event. Um, and yeah, just I don't know, a little bit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The usual. You went to a webinar? Oh, well, yeah, that was last week. Um, you know, but before, yeah. af after the, after the Bogus Hangouts. Oh, yeah, it was great. Um, that was really cool getting to meet Ron Allen, um, just everyone there. Really good questions. And, yeah, that was a, a neat experience. Yeah, I don't know where Ron Allen is. I did invite him. Um, yeah, no sign yet. Um, but I know a couple of people are running late, so maybe he's he's just running late. Did you talk to? Him? Did you get like a chance to invite him? Other than like you know the yeah, other so, time? Somebody oh. sent me this this thing the other day saying you'll never guess who I got to come on. And so I just oh, wait, we didn't I, talk about which one. Like what, so <laughs> that's why I was wondering. Like, did you actually? This excited person yeah. didn't tell me that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, he, he hasn't replied in a week to say I can't make it. So you know, we, this is the way we do our invitations. As everyone who, who watches the show knows, 
we decide who we'd like to invite. We don't bother to consult them. We just invite them. They turn out what they don't. We don't care. Uh, Jen, returning yet again. You're becoming an addict, aren't you? We're going to have to add you to the back <laughs> soon. Um, so what have you been up to this week? I think this week I have feels like I've spent all my time scouring the Google search results for title tag length. I have been counting lots of pixels, counting lots of characters, and description lengths all over the place. So that feels like I've done nothing but that. <laughs> In any other profession, that would just get you locked up, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm it, sure. It, <laughs> it probably should get me locked up in this profession, too. <laughs> <laughs> This week, I've been mostly measuring title lengths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's been quite a change, though. It's been a, a long time um, since Google made such a big change in, in one go to the layout. Of course, it follows on from getting rid of the right side column. So I've yeah. been half expecting it. But yeah, thought, so was I. And now it's here. Now everyone has to rush out and change title tags. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, apparently Dawn's getting a, an error when she tries to log in. Uh, I I don't know why, Dawn. Um, it's worked for everybody else. Uh, Bill has both sound and vision this week, so, you know, Google <laughs> is behaving itself. Um, all I can suggest, Dawn, is try... Uh, if you're using Chrome, definitely close the browser, try again. Um, it, it's it's one of those things. Google seems to love to update Chrome every week just before the buggers hang out. Uh, sometimes the night before, but you know, they don't want us giving away all the secrets. That's what it is. <laughs> well, I can, I can dream that's why it is. Uh, is yeah. But they just updated... Uh uh, Hangouts, I guess, and as that's funny now. Hangouts, uh, if you make a, a event, uh, it will change your link uh, every time you start Hangouts. So there's no point to send a uh, link before you you start the last one. Funny, funny things. Right. Yeah, if you want to send the link in advance, you really it's okay to set it up via Hangouts, but then you need to log into YouTube and go into the live event management on YouTube, which tends to be a little bit more reliable. Don't know why, but that's the way it is. Uh, Arno! No, but, but I did I did exactly, I do exactly this, uh, and uh, it used to, the, the link stays the same, doesn't matter how many times you will be into things else, and now it looks like every time you start it, it will generate a new link, so there's no point to send the link. Because, yeah, yeah, well, it's happened a couple of days ago, and, yeah, I've experimented, and it's new link all the time. Funny. Cool. Uh, Arno, your first time here? Uh, tell us about yeah. your last week. What have you been up to this week? We, we, we kind of find that's the best way to get to know people and, and what their lives are like. Um, well, I've, I've been um, busy with... Uh, a big PR, PR launch. We did a big survey for one of my clients and we sent it out and it was picked up relatively good. So um, in about six, in six countries. So uh, we got the media mentions I was looking for. So, um, so that was good. And I've um, and, uh, been experimenting a bit with um, it since it's a user generated site. Um, with um, uh, well optimizing the crawl budget and um, because I was running into a shitload of 404s um, so um, yeah I'm, I'm working on that er experimenting with that and uh, well um, up until now the, the the experiments are pretty good so um, yeah that, that's what I've been uh, been up to and uh, and this week uh, I'm going to go to Valencia, so uh, that should be good. Meeting up with uh, maybe some of you guys will be there. I don't know, but um, um, at least I know. Well, I know quite a few uh, that will go there. So to the inbounder. So uh, yeah, should be good. 
I, I don't think anyone we've got in at the moment is on their way. I know that uh, Monty, who we invited, in, and, and Dawn, who's having trouble getting in, are, are both certainly going to be there. Um, oh. It's not one I could manage to take time off for this time around, um, much as I would like to. Yeah, because um, and, the yeah, venue is good and everything. It seems uh, it should be good. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, I was going to ask for, on behalf of somebody else, uh, you know, whether everyone fancies a, a, a conference in Kiev sometime soon. Uh, <laughs> in Kiev. Yeah, it's a fascinating city, so I thought it'd uh, be a great place for a, a venue. Good excuse to get there. Or Moscow. <laughs> it's quite expensive, I guess. <laughs> oh, no, not, not bad at all. The uh, cost of living there is um, roughly on a par uh, with Spain, so it's it's not that far off. But in uh, yeah, well, let's ask him. In, uh, in Moscow. Well, Moscow used to be very expensive, but uh, uh, local currency basically half of what it was two years ah, ago. Yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah, that's yep. true. Yep. So Anton, how's your week been? Other than well, chaos? Yeah, it was it was it was not too bad. Yeah, well, you probably know we will eventually figure it out with Google, and we will have uh, Q and A with Google, which is uh, number four. What would be very different? Well, obviously, Bill, Jen, and uh, and you uh, will be there. So, well, but you have to. It would be two Googles now, two Googlers against we, you. Or, we or still have the two to one. They haven't got a chance. <laughs> well, it's two to one. We can't. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. I always wanted more than one Googler because I I did worry that you know it felt like we were kind of ganging up on them and picking on them. <laughs> I know that you know technically they're Google, but even so, you know it, it's nice to have more than one. And so I just think that even when people work for the same thing, sometimes they've got different ways of explaining things, and and you know one person's explanation doesn't quite get it through for you, and another person's does. Well, we'll see. But yeah, now I guess uh, 16th, everybody's happy. Also, should be a problem and. Uh, Jen and uh, Bill, if you can confirm the Google Calendar, I would appreciate it. it. It's a good topic as well because it is one that, even though it sounds quite basic and a lot of people think they know everything about duplicate content, it's still one of the biggest, most prevalent problems around. And it, it, it's only getting worse as more and more people start using tracking code URLs uh, when people are still worrying about. Um, using uh, HTTP and HTTPS and when people have got multiple languages and you know all of these things can create Google content and there's so many myths still about there yeah Bill I mean how often do we hear people talking about the duplicate content penalty way too often we were asked that regularly at the forums back when we ran uh, for administrators and create a site. People would bring up duplicate content penalties and it's like there's no such thing and they'd say what? <laughs> yeah they, they just really couldn't believe it and we would you know go forth and, and prove it and provide plenty of evidence every single time and we convince that one person and then next day somebody else would ask or something. somebody else would say I've been hit with a duplicate content penalty <laughs> and um, yeah it, it's one of those things there has never been a duplicate content penalty because there's never been a need for a duplicate content penalty you've got Panda and Panda looks at thin content and if that if what your version of thin content is that you're regularly serving things as found elsewhere um, then yes, you can get in uh, in trouble for that, but it's because it's thin content, not necessarily because it's an exact duplicate. Duplicate happens all of the time. The number of sites that you can still get to both the www version and the without the www version, the ones where you've got a HTTP version and a HTTPS version, um, and let's face it, 
any URL out there. Stick a question mark on the end and any string you want, and it works. I, I used to send little greetings to people when I, I sent them a link. Um, I, I did it to Ralph and, and people like that for years, Ralph Tegmeyer, uh, Fanta Master. Every time I'd send him a link, I'd, I'd put a little question mark, hi, Ralph, um, or Ammon says hi, just so when he was looking at his logs, <laughs> he'd get a little Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you you can build these kind of things in so easily. Uh, One of my favorite examples used to be the New York Times website, where if you uh, had it with a www, it was page rank nine. Without <laughs> www, it was page rank seven. Now we no longer have toolbar page rank to show anybody. So. Yeah. Can't use an example like that besides the Times fix their website. And can't you use uh, Moz's domain authority to show it off or something? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got a feeling that Majestic doesn't always combine the two. There's, there's a couple of tools that do if you put the WW or the non W, it will combine them by itself because it's trying to be helpful, but of course it's actually being unhelpful when you're trying to see the difference. Um, but I think Majestic still lets you look at the two separately. Um, it, it can be a useful way of seeing exactly how people are splitting their link popularity. And even if you've got canonicals, even if you've got 301s, it's worth noting that those count as if you've got a, a blank page with nothing on it except a link to that domain. Most of the link juice gets passed through, but it is kind of treated as a link, and if there is still a damping factor, that damping factor is applied to the redirect. So you've had it once on the link to your site, and then you've doubled that damping factor by then redirecting. So the less redirects you can have, the better. Are you really sure? Yeah. Okay. In the original page rank papers. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they haven't fixed anything since. But there's no real reason they should. It, it wasn't broken, why fix it? There are plenty of reasons why you would want to have that damping factor still in play. You need it. So what are you saying is that when you do, uh, I often see the redirect chain where you go from a non uh, W to a W and then to an HTTPS one. Yeah. So you do basically do triple it. You do double. Is there two times damping? That, well, that wouldn't really make sense. It, the damping factor exists to make the maths of page rank work. Uh, page rank no, is a way of... I see that, I see that. But yeah. So you need a damping factor because otherwise you can't give a page a, a default value. It, 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 wouldn't make, it wouldn't make sense to have the damping factor on the HTTPS. Google, actually, John Mueller had said that you're not going to lose page rank when you switch over to HTTPS because people were using that saying no, exactly. I'm not going to switch because I'm going to lose page rank and so he came out mm, six months ago maybe and said that they, there's no loss of page rank for when you switch to HTTPS and are redirecting from your HTTP URLs. Uh, yeah, I still wouldn't have the multiple levels of redirects though. Uh, oh yeah, yeah no, I for sure, this as few as possible. Hey Dawn, glad you could join Hi. us. Looking, yeah, looking sorry very about that. Oh, I didn't even have Firefox installed on my computer, so that was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> but I'm rubbish, <laughs> so apologies there. No worries at all. You, you're looking forward to uh, to Valencia? Yes. Have you seen my new nails? Yes, yes. I, <laughs> I saw them on Facebook earlier. Fabulous, aren't they? <laughs> Sparkly, in case you can't see on the. They camera. are very sparkling. They don't. This light does not give them justice. But I imagine when they're in the sun and a cocktail in hand, they're going to look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They will. So yeah. If anyone wants to make some quick profit, just uh, take up some shares in um, automotive insurance companies in Spain for when uh, those nails cause glare and make cars crash all over Spain uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Dawn, what have you been up to this week? 
Oh, well, I had a bit of an interesting week in that uh, last... I went to um, Search London last Tuesday, and that was really good, and one of the talks was about the use of Cloudflare in uh, really speeding up um, some sites. So I thought last Friday morning, oh, I'm just going to go for this. So I threw my threw one of the quite well three projects into Cloudflare, one of which has got like nearly two hundred thousand URLs, and it was just initially well, it's been a bit of a nightmare really, but it's kind of getting sorted now. There's quite a lot of gotchas actually when you when you just suddenly transfer to a a CDN like that. Loads of internal links broke. All the JavaScript went. All the CSS. Work, you know, there's like a little WordPress section on the site, even though most of it is like custom built, and um, that doesn't work until you install a plugin. Just loads, of, loads of issues. So that kind of kept me busy really for quite a few days. But no, it's really good. Managed to get the speed on this project from uh, about um, eight seconds, which is quite slow, down to 1.28 seconds to load. So, and massive crawl as a result of that. So it's really good. Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah, it's it's always fascinating when you see you know something you think is going to be quite a simple migration, then turns out to be a real issue for almost no reason whatsoever. You know, internal links should still work because they're all relative to each other, but of course they don't. Well, they they're kind of on this particular project, they're all built into they're all hard coded in to full site root and full site roots has obviously been defined globally as something else and I couldn't find the variable, the global variable in the files to change full site root to the new um, the, the new protocol. So that was a nightmare. But anyway, like you said, it's all a learning curve, isn't it? And, you know, just interesting really. Even though it's for the time, it's horrific. But as I said, the crawl, half the crawling download time, and the crawl shot up by about four times. So I know that a lot of that will be transferring from HTTP to HTTPS because you get the flexible SSL included. So it's like an immediate switch to SSL. But it's still like four times as much versus you would assume that if it was literally just HTTP. To HTTPS, it would just be double the crawl, but it's actually four times as much. So it, that's it pretty. Can, of course, when Google finds a lot of new content all in one go, it can trigger the spider to to go more deeply. Uh, than yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty good. But I think the fact that it, it, it literally was downloading at half the time, uh, it's really quite a significant dip because of the speed. Just, it was just really, really good, yeah. And and actually a bit of a ranking boost. So, yeah, so that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, Monty, I, I know you're, uh, you're watching. You, you shouldn't be watching. You're supposed to be in here. So uh, if, if you're paying attention, you know, get in here, Monty. We, we, we've got a seat here waiting for you. Um, hey, I'm watching the nice balance, by the way, the nice girls v boys balance here. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. We That's try fun. to be inclusive. You yeah. would not believe how hard it is on some hangouts to actually get an even split. There, there seem to be a lot more women in the industry who are reluctant to get in front of a camera. Whereas us blokes, you know, we know we're not going to look good. We don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there are still some women in the industry who really. Worry more about you know how they're going to look on camera. Um, well, do you know what? It's not just that, Ammon. Uh, and this is—I don't know whether Jen and Christine feel the same way. I know that some conversations that have been had in you know various areas. I think women in the industry sometimes feel a little bit reluctant coming forward and actually, make, you know, giving their opinion because it is still fairly male-dominated, etc. And I think sometimes. We're a little bit, you know, we're a bit reluctant to, to give our views because we feel that maybe we'll kind of get jumped on and criticised. I don't know. Jen, Christine, do you ever feel like that a little bit? Um, well, I'm still learning, so uh, I have that 
going for me because I don't mind um, looking or being criticized because I, I'm asking to be criticized. I want people to be critical of what I'm doing. So, yeah, probably yeah. different um, with Jen. Um, yeah. I don't know. I probably don't notice it as much, but like when I got into this industry, if, when I went to conferences, I'd be one of like three or four women. So. It's I'm kind of used to it, I guess you'd say. Whereas I can definitely see it could be intimidating. I'm sure it was intimidating to me back then, but now it's just okay. kind of whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm one of those ones. I always rail against the. the Hello. Uh, hey, Monty. Hi, Monty. I, I rail against the male-dominated idea because uh, it, it, at the start some of the. Some of the most impressive people at the start of the industry were women. You know, Jill Whalen goes back as far as you like. Christine Churchill goes back as far as you like. Some of the most impressive people at the start of the industry were women. Monty, you need to turn off the playback. <laughs> you can hear us now through the hangout. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, think, I actually think we may be outnumbering you here. Yeah, yeah you are. Like, War. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long may it continue. <laughs> Sorry, bit of a feminist streak coming out there. This is hilarious too. Like, it's like Google has um, segregated us. Like, because <laughs> I've got all the women on one side. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, is that is that just is that automatic or is that just the number in which that we've entered the handout? Okay. I'm not quite sure what you said. Sorry. I think Mark said something. Hello. You've got to, have you got the handout open on another cleaning bottle? It's the first time I'm enjoying a handout. I think. Can you hear me well? We, we can hear you almost a little too well. We, we can kind of hear ourselves in the background. Oh, really? Yeah. You can still have it playing um, if you want to like watch it at the same time, just like see what things look like. But um, make sure to mute it on the other tab. Like you can actually just mute the tab. Uh, yeah. No, it's muted already. Yeah, it's good now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Monty, you. your your first uh, first time joining us. So, yeah. what have you been up to this week? Tell us. Um, I have been trying to sort out a number of technical issues as well. Some of them derived from the fact that I have installed um, Cloudflare. We were just we were just chatting about that, Monty, because we've been discussing it this week, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite long, actually. It has been very, very interesting, actually. I quite like the um, the technology, but also because the site is a very shitty site that we are trying to redesign, it has caused a couple of problems that are already sorted, but, um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much what I have been up to um, this, this week, actually, trying to get around all those little problems. Yeah, I'll, I'll back you up. It was all Dawn's fault. You know, she was the one encouraged you to, to jump over to Cloudflare. Oh, yeah, go to Cloudflare. Probably <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you, actually, because that is kind of how the conversation started, isn't it, Monty? <laughs> yeah, what, what you don't know, Monty, is that Dawn is working for one of your client's rivals and was paid to take you out of action for a week by keeping you busy. <laughs> 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 I was out of action for a week. <laughs> That wasn't very clever of me, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Zora. Hi. How are you, and what have you been up to this week? I'm good. Well, this morning I was uh, on the panel of Anton's uh, webinar. That was really interesting, um, going through and, and setting up spreadsheets and coordinating them to find... Uh, keywords from competitors that that you may not be using that you might want to consider to incorporate um, as new content on your website. That was a very interesting discussion. Um, 
Also, I have a new uh, ghostwriting project with someone. We're doing a book, so that's very exciting. Yes. And uh, working on, uh, also working on the second um, story in my mystery series. So, busy girl. Yeah, yeah, very. <laughs> Be a little careful when doing keyword research from competitors because you will meet jokers like me who the only time I will ever put a keywords meta tag into a site is to deliberately feed people the keywords that sound like they ought to be good but are a complete waste of time. The only time I will ever use a keywords tag is to throw off competitors giving them Tons of stuff well, to I, I think one of the one of the caveats that we discussed after um, after the presentation was that you know because the whole it was all about you know use using spreadsheets to search and find the keywords that competitors are using that you might not be using on your website. That was the drill. But the part where some people especially got stuck was, okay, now I have these keywords. How do I know what to do with them? And it really boils down to, you know, discretion about, about where you want your business to be and how you want it reflected on, in search. And so, yes, I mean, it, it, uh, for me, this is just me, and I am not, you know, an SEO. But for me, if you're going to take those key words or key phrases and use them to construct some kind of content and and other relative phrasings, that you better be darn sure that it is uh, related to everything that you want perceived about your business. Just because a competitor uses it doesn't mean that you should use it. And that was mentioned in the discussion because nope. I don't know how do you manage that? You managed to mute somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> going, through, going through immense data crunching without discernment at the end isn't, doesn't do anything. I found that the the highest quality keyword research you can get is to put a search box on the site itself and then mine the searches that your actual visitors are using. That's telling you what they're looking for and not finding. And unlike any third party data, this is specific to the audience you're already attracting. Exactly. I just wrote a, a post about that last week uh, about Oh, let's see. I call it your pinto pony factor. What is the one thing that makes you distinct? And um, and and that doing that research about how other people perceive your business is is key. It's absolutely key. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, assuming we've still got anybody not muted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I got another one. Um, I'm I'm pretty often I'm using just um, if I need to do some research for a new country or something, I'm just setting up an AdWords campaign and looking at the search terms. That's it's. I mean, and and they're sending the the traffic to my competitor because I don't mind. Um, but it gives you tremendous insight in uh, the search intent of the users. And I do still find that there is often a strong correlation, um, particularly in mature markets, between the amount people are bidding and the likelihood of conversions from those keywords because people have been around long enough to know which words are really valuable, which ones they just want to show up. <coughs> it varies. There are still people who get AdWords terribly wrong, but a lot of the time you will find that, you know, People have done their homework there to get the uh, the conversions right, and the adwords that people are spending the most for are are worthwhile. Yeah, but I see a lot still of broad match bidding going on, 
Um, and that and there are some diamond keywords you can figure out by by just sending that traffic to a different website. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <coughs> just it works for me. Yes, yes, absolutely. And um, this is it. By using the board match, you can then look at the searches that go with it, the extra words. Board match is where you're picking one word. Um, you know, let's let's say you you've got a client who sells beds. You might board match the word beds. Terrible idea if you actually sell beds because you're going to come up for flower beds and everything else, sea beds, yep. uh, rock beds. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's not just bedding, um, but to get an idea of keyword volume and actual refinements that people are using in search, it can be exceptionally powerful. Yeah. But a good, I suppose I agree. a good, uh, a good. You've not got the budget to sort of throw a broad match campaign or something, really. Just. Well, well, you, if you throw a match divide, can you? Well, well, the thing is. If you do modified broad, and if it's not something like credit cards or or all kinds of businesses where they pay a shitload of money per broad match keyword, but modified broad um, gives you a lot of uh, well, basically sentences people look for, which gives you a shitload of intent and content ideas and everything. So I wouldn't go broad match. I would go modified broad. Yeah. So well, with the past. Yeah, because it'll still it'll still add all the stemmings, etc., and the plurals, and you know similes, etc., with broad but, match models. But, but if if you do a test like it, I I just use it for testing, mm. and and then it gives you and you can exclude if if you see stuff coming in, you can exclude those, and and you'll you'll have the budget to look for other keywords that might be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I remember seeing um, a conference a couple of years ago. Paul Shapiro did a really interesting um, presentation that was around looking for, you know, the really long-tailed conversational things for topics um, yeah. from audience um, analysis using a, a tool called, I think it was Nime. I don't know whether anybody's heard of Nime. It's like a data mining tool. And he put it's K N I M E, and he literally pulled in um, a lot of stuff from you know Twitter, etc., and was able to almost like pull out a conversation from a specific audience, you know, to get a real feel for what they were after and what they were talking about, and you know that was really really useful. So uh, he's got a deck somewhere on that. I think well, somebody well, actually write a Another one that I've been using is just customer service. Um, if you just start talking to the customer service, if it's an e-commerce party, whatever, um, they know the topics they get questions about. So, um, and a lot of those things, it's not only for site optimization, it's not only for conversion optimization, but can also be used for SEO. Mm. Well, they're, they're the answer to questions. Yeah, Where definitely. It's a complete mystery. One that I still recommend if you if you really want to, you know, hack it from the the bottom up. Find an internet cafe or find a coffee bar where lots of people are online, and for the price of a cup yep. of coffee, you can ask them all kinds of questions. If you were yeah. in this yeah, position, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing you wanted the same to know thing. this. What would you do? What would you search for? Where would you go first? In fact, because sometimes it will turn out they'll go first to Facebook or they'll go first to Twitter. Or before they'll go to search, so it can be well, really, really useful information. Plus, it's all in there. It's gone dark in here. My God, God, it went dark then. It's like a black hole. Yeah, that's the trouble with, with the summer. You know, you, you get used to the suddenly, house being bright, and then suddenly the sun goes down. And, yeah, yeah, no, and um, but yeah, no. So it's like that. It's well, it's it's the whole momentology, isn't it? And the moments that matter and the zero mm -hmm. moment really where people are having those conversations before you even know that they exist as a brand and yeah. I suppose those conversations are if you can tap into them you kind of got a massive head start on competitors mm -hmm. yeah well, well actually well, I'm using my wife for a lot of research just ask her to do stuff and it's very hard not to tell her what to do because you know how to do it but if you see her doing it, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. So, for instance, a lot of people that want to buy stuff 
they go into images. I've seen it with my own eyes. It was like, wow. They just go to Google Images to figure oh, out. Yeah, yeah, they do, actually. Oh, so my, you, you are a brave, brave man to, to be on this hangout after we've just said about male-dominated industry and to say it's difficult not to tell my <laughs> wife what to do. I mean, you know, you've... You <laughs> True that, true that. <laughs> uh, Frank in the audience pointed out that misspellings are still quite big in pay-per-click, and he's absolutely right. Google corrects uh, misspellings for you on the the standard, but the pay-per-click, you can still get quite a lot of stuff from misspellings. Mm. But I'll tell you what, just on the subject, I know I'm bleating on about gender here, uh, but it's interesting to... So here you said that, um, Anu, about women, or your wife in particular, going looking at images when she goes shopping. I wonder if there's any sort of um, split there, gender-wise, between you know the women that look at uh, pictures uh, versus males. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just well, a well, Just, just I'm look at the that. demographics of Pinterest. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, the demographics on Pinterest are massively female, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I, I did notice I had someone point out to me advertisements in images this week, in image search at the very top of those searches. Yeah, they started running uh, product listing ads yesterday, I believe it was. But they've actually been testing it since January is when I first saw them. I saw them well, like two weeks ago. Yeah. So are they permanent now, Jen? Are they are they running them permanently? In, yeah, in... it was part of their big announcements yesterday that AdWords did. Oh, I was probably battling the cloud flare, to be honest. <laughs> it's been an interesting time. There's always a lot of Google activity right before I.O., of course. Yeah. Um, but it does seem that Google have been going absolutely overboard more than ever before in the past couple of weeks we've had so many new things uh, Peter in the comments just mentioned Parsi McPass face I hate <laughs> the fact they've named it that but it is worth a mention and uh, you know this particularly ties into things we've been talking about in recent weeks about uh, the way rank brain works we were looking particularly at things like the the word to vec tool there and of course, Parsi McPassface is again very, very similar, very connected. Mm. Uh, it is a thing. I, I did wonder, I had to check when that story broke that it wasn't dated April 1st. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? What have you been I, up to this week? Uh, I don't even know where to start this week. Uh, That's your age. Pardon me? That's your age. Start it on a Sunday. That's where we start our weeks. Look who's talking, old man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy, but there was such a great panel. I thought I and there was a seat, so I jumped in, but don't let me interrupt because I no. have nothing, nothing brilliant <laughs> average to add. That, that's what we're here for. That's the joy of this show is that, you know what? Everyone has something brilliant if you just bother to bring it out of them. Everybody. Um We've had, you know, people. Anton, you were telling me the, the earlier this week, that show's a bit high, bro. I don't know what show he was watching. It certainly isn't the, the Bogus Hangout. But uh, mm -hmm. we kind of talk about a lot of things in depth. But I pointed out, look, a lot of the people who, who've been on this show, um, Laurie Varga, so. I really enjoyed the one with Laurie Varga on. She's not an SEO. She's a brilliant writer. Oh, that was a great I, one. But I thought that was fascinating, and we talked a lot about publishing and books. She is a she's she's brilliant, but she also lies a lot. That's what makes her a good writer. And and Craig, you know, Craig was on saying, "Oh, I'm not a marketer. I don't know what I'm doing on this show." I said, Are you "Again, one of the best shows." Um, <laughs> You know, and we, we talked about branding and about the way that what we do as marketers is very similar to what a, a, a graphic designer is doing. We're trying to take a very complex message and make it instantly transmittable to, to give it an iconic, bite-sized, here it is in a blast, 
way of, of transmitting what it's all about. So, yeah, you know, that that's the joy of the Bible's Hangout, is that we're all, everybody out there is an interesting person if you can just find the right topic. And um, it's funny how much we all have in common, even when we think we have, you know, careers that are completely different. The number of people, you know, marketing is sometimes a bad word, isn't it? No, it's never a bad word. Why would it be a bad word? You should hang out on some of the dead <laughs> communities, uh, Kristin. Believe me, marketing is a bad word, and SEO. Oh, oh, oh. oh I, I know. I'm, I'm being cheeky. Um, but I, we all are marketers. Like the moment that we step on to the web, we are marketing something, and like being able to convey that and explain it to people so that they can understand it, like that can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the thing that irritates me is that uh, they're just moving it to a new, new name. I see all these people coming up saying, I'm growth hacker, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they're basically doing marketing. They, they, they've invented a new name and it just... It, it kind of irritates me. <laughs> Growth Hacker is my absolute hate. Hate, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate that one. I hate hustling. A, a cancer surgeon is a growth hacker if he's doing it very badly. <laughs> Otherwise, it just sounds like some kind of garden implement. You know, a weed whacker. <laughs> I think that they just want to make it sound cool and... As soon as it backfires, it's going to be very bad for us all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people do need to continually reinvent things. Yeah, I, I get why they wanted the term inbound marketing, um, even though I always get this image of my head of a man bent over shoving his own head up his own backside. That's why <laughs> every time I hear the word inbound marketing. People who still don't know what I do for a living in any way, so I think marketing can be a very bad word because, um, yeah, it, it can mean office work, it can mean sales, it can mean nothing to most people, and it is a real pain in the neck <laughs> sometimes. But, um, you know, we sometimes quite like this kind of anonymity, you know, this kind of of separation that keeps me from the rest of the professions, the well-known professions, I don't know. Kind of enjoy that. <laughs> oh, Dawn's got a hamster with her. <laughs> He's very cute, but he really needs to be one of those little hamster balls running around oh, the room. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi, actually, for a minute. So. Hello, Bertie. <laughs> <Hi. laughs> Gonna go out for a walk, so yeah. So yeah. Hello. Sorry, yeah. I just It's one of those things. I think Seth Godin, I'm usually a big fan of his, but publishing a book titled All Marketers Are Liars may not have helped. <laughs> because let's face it, a lot of people didn't read anything except the title. Mm -hmm. Um I read I read that book actually, it was quite good. Yes, it was very uh, Seth is always uh, an interesting person to read. Ever since Purple Cow, I've been a fan. Yeah, Purple yeah. Cow was, and still is, one of the books I recommend everybody to read. If you want to know yeah. why we say a USP is important, there's no better book than Purple Cow for starting people down that path. I don't know how he constantly comes out with, he writes so much, doesn't he? And, and it's always oh, good. Constantly. Yeah. yeah, these people that just they don't they write loads of stuff, but it's all you know, it becomes a bit all the same and not very good and you kind of get almost put off it, but then you've got somebody like Seth Godin and he just literally seems to be able to throw out really interesting things all the time. Yeah. Uh, Peter Hasley in the audience has just coined the one unbound marketing. I love that. Marketing <laughs> unleashed, unbound marketing. I think that's awesome. <laughs> I, I may have to steal that, Peter, and I, I'm going to delete that comment so nobody knows where I stole it. <laughs> Peter is quite brilliant. 
Um, for those uh, of you here who don't know Peter, uh, old friend of the show, he has a tool called Cise, C I S E, and it does um, a lot of semantic analysis of words and concepts, uh, which can be very useful when you're trying to write copy around a particular theory uh, or around a particular concept. Zara, like you use it quite often, right? I do. I I use it quite often. I also to just extend what Anna just said, I use it, you know, when to collect phrases about a particular business. So I have certain, um, Peter calls them word banks, and so I will create word banks about the overall business, but then for each piece of content, I'll set up a word bank for that particular article, but Meanwhile, making sure that there are relationships between the specifics of the article and the overall business. It's a very helpful tool. Yeah. The authoring tool is extremely helpful. I must admit, I've actually been enjoying playing with things like word to vec as well in that context. Um, because it's very interesting to look at the semantic correlations between things uh, with that tool. It is, it is, and one of the things that I find a, a lot of fun with um, with size is it sometimes comes up with these phrases that it I just seem out of out of the blue, just totally out of the blue. And one of the things it does is, um, as a writer, it sort of kickstarts your brain into thinking in new ways about whatever it is mm -hmm. your subject matter is because Sai says, you know, um, first out of the gate and you're like, what? Okay, <laughs> you know, I have to I have to expand my thinking about this. I think it's a great tool for uh, expanding thinking because it's so easy, especially um, writing about a particular subject uh, to, you know, kind of be narrowing it down so you're bringing people in so they understand what that particular subject is about but at the same time size is going nope 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 you gotta kick it out and broaden the thinking so it's kind of cool <laughs> I'm kind of fond of the knowledge craft search API I worked with a client and I looked up their name in the search API and found Ten other entities with the same name. Yeah, I know it's hard. List those in an audit for them and said, "These are your competitors. These are things that Google thinks somebody might mean when they put your name in a search box." Yeah, we've got to uh, distinguish you somehow from these other things. It, yeah. it, it's surprising the the wrinkles that there are. You know, it, it's it's why we've all had careers in this and continue to have careers in this, and probably are going to continue to have careers in this field for for many decades to come. It's it's there's a lot to take on board. Um, you know, twenty years in, uh, and I've pushed myself into some of the most leading edge industries at times, and I'm still learning new things every single day. It's Me too, like. especially technologies, especially new technologies. Um, I am discussing with a developer a new technology that he uses now for workflow. Um, I can't remember which which one. I think it's called Netsphere or something like that. I will put it here on the chat to the Hangout later on when I find it. So I think I, I thought it was very very interesting. Rather than having a staging and a sandbox. Um, sites like in different URLs and everything um, I think you can use this technology to put them both together so a kind of dashboard thing it works pretty pretty much like um like a WordPress I was very very impressed by it actually it's always fascinating to be thinking of, of what's what's around the corner as well you know what 
what's not directly in front of us but it is coming up and of course voice search is one you can't miss at the moment but it's going to become increasingly important one of the things that all technologies do all through history is they get smaller until they virtually disappear and become just a part of our life you know there was a time when to know the time in a city that city club together and bought a great big clock that cost a fortune to make from an expert craftsman uh, and then you know the clocks got smaller and smaller until now you know you've got the time on most devices you earn you've got it on your wrist you've got it on your phone you've got it on your computer and you think nothing of it this is how technology always goes and you can expect the exact same thing of the internet. It won't be something that you have to go to a specific place to connect to. It won't be something that you need a specific device to connect with. It will become something that is around you and connected to you in every part of your life uh, within the next 20 years. Um, one of the, the big directions that people have been talking about is that a lot of research has, has of course been going into bots, into search assistants, uh, whether they're built into WhatsApp, whether they're built into Twitter, whatever platform you're already sort of tuned into, the idea that you can just type a question and a machine can give you the perfect answer, or at least its, it's best answer. Um, fits with the way a lot of people are using the internet anyway. So this is a direction a lot of people are going and some people have been questioning um, whether Google is paying enough attention to that market. You know, Google's main chat app is still Hangouts. Um, isn't it time that they, they moved forwards? You know, there's, there's no real chance of putting a bot into that. How, how are they going to do this? Well, Google's got Google now, but I agree with people. I'm expecting to see something very new from Google um, that is moving towards that market. I think the days when people start with a search engine are going to be disappearing. They're going to expect to search from wherever they are. So what does that do to the Google business model as that switches over? What do you think? It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because how do you serve ads when it's all about giving one quick answer? It's going to be fascinating. Maybe there's going to be more interstitials and you know a quick ad before we deliver you to your answer. Um, almost like a TV ad break. It's going to be interesting. We don't know because we've never done it before. Somebody will invent a way and it'll work. Google's Go transforming their business model too. They may no longer be all about ads real soon. They may be more about uh, serving content on cloud storage, you know, providing apps, providing other web pages, uh, providing uh, second screen interaction with uh, televisions and radio. Yep. Certainly search is one end of the equation, but the other end of the equation is memory and about remembering things we've already looked up. Um, Pocket and Evernote we already know are very successful um, for some of that, but they're still kind of awkward. And we kind of need to integrate that whole thing, don't we? We need that one assistant that can find us new information, but can also find us the information we've already got. Wait, how is Evernote awful at that? Sorry, what? How is Evernote awful at finding information that you've already got? It's not. It's just not good at finding new information. It oh. isn't a search engine. You need something that does it all. That I can ask it a question and it knows, oh, yeah, you've already we've done research on that, so you probably want these things in there, but let me throw in some fresh stuff as well. Or did you know that this thing in your collection has changed recently? There's been some updates. Well, it does do that. Um, with premium version, like with context, you can link it to um, like everyone that you're connected with and LinkedIn. Like I get things um, like that are related contextually at the end of my notes, um, and I found it to be very helpful in helping me so like source out different information uh, that I wouldn't have known otherwise. I also have it connected to like um, Wall Street Journal, um, 
couple other things. That's like those are the two LinkedIn and Wall Street Journal that I use the most in like the with the context tool with Evernote. I think we may have a very interesting green room, but we are at the hour <laughs> for this week. Um, so I'm going to start winding down. Bill, I'm going to do a quick roundup. What are we up to in the coming week? Bill, what are you up to this week? Um, uh, in, I'm in the middle of uh, mining patents. I found some interesting ones this morning. I'm trying to decide which ones I might want to write about. There's one that's really fascinating with autonomous cars and how to minimize damage to passengers who might be injured by being hit by one of these cars, which I thought was really interesting. They would uh, cover that in a patent. Mm, certainly is. Uh, when, when Bill says patent mining, he means that he's got the mining helmet and everything. Um, <laughs> you've got to take these things seriously. That's how you get to Bill's position. Uh, Jen, what are you up to this coming week? Um, I'm supposed to be packing because I'm going to San Francisco next week to cover some Google stuff, and then I'm off to Australia to speak at a couple of conferences. Nice. Yeah, cool. And uh, of course, we've kind of moved the date for the Google Q and A, so I can't remember if you're yep. in Australia then or not. I'll just be back. There you go. Excellent. Uh, Kristen, what are you up to this week? Um, my kids are like like the school year is ending, so we've got lots of different things coming up, like um, ceremonies and whatnot. Um, so I'm I'm doing that, and then like fitting it around other stuff, you know, online stuff. Kids first. Okay, Anna. Uh, uh, Valencia. Yes, of course. Uh, hanging out for the whole week. Uh, uh, well, that's basically I'm leaving tomorrow and then uh, and then be back on Saturday. Uh, still need to do some client work, but should be good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. That, that is kind of why I'm not going because I know I would pretty much have to book a whole week for this because it's, there's the preparation before you go, there's the actual time you're there. There's the three days in detox afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Uh, Dawn? Valencia, yeah. And then I'm off to Australia as well. So Valencia tomorrow, back on Saturday. And then, yeah, the following Saturday, I'm going to Sydney. I'm going to SMX, or the Search Summit thing. Um, I'm going to Big Digital Adelaide, and I'll see her. Uh, and she's going to try and steal my Dawny box, she says, but she's not having it. Oh, yeah, no, no way. <laughs> I'm keeping my eye on the Australian market because I've got this funny feeling that things are going to go very big there in the very near future. It's becoming one of the major gateways um, for the Middle East, for the Far East, sorry, where lots of different cultures can come together where perhaps politics keeps them apart directly. Um, as you know, there are still sometimes issues between Japan and countries where it used to have its factories and, and there's some political issues there. <laughs> Australia seems to be the place that can bring them together and give them a doorway to the West. And if the UK drops out of Europe as well, that opens up our ability to trade more with them again because the EU has been putting some blocks on that in the past. So it, it's certainly something I'm, I'm keeping an eye on at the moment. Uh, Monty, what are you up to this week? I am going to Valencia as well. I'm leaving in a few hours time actually, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be really, really good, although I will have to do a little bit of work as well because we are trying to implement a few things on the site just to keep it going until we redesign it and we keep on finding issues so I need to keep an eye on Trello and all the and everything else but it's going to be really 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 good looking forward to it as well and to getting a little bit of sun as well <laughs> yeah. it, it must be thrilling, I bet you've always wanted to go to Spain <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> never been there before, you see <laughs> where is it you're from originally? What city or area? 
Sorry, I didn't hear that. I think. Where I... is it you're originally from? Um, you know, I am from Madrid. <laughs> I am from Madrid, yeah, and I've been to Valencia before, but um, never for a conference, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was more for work. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really really good. I am looking forward to the artificial intelligence talks and the analytics talks that are that are going to be there. Yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> no, I, must admit, I am very jealous because I love. The historic aspects. Uh, uh, you know, people who know me know I'm a, I'm a big history buff. Some regions of Spain and Portugal, some of the old yeah. uh, castles and fortresses, fantastic. And I, I could literally spend months there just going around and, and absorbing it all. Mm -hmm. There is a linked history between the, um, well, Spain and Portugal and the south of England, a very big one, or even uh, Scotland, very big one. It's very, very interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, Anton, I know you've got a, a big event coming up this week with uh, social media marketing. Yeah, it will be conference, social media marketing conference, but yeah, as usual, a big Russian part, a small international session, but we do have Eric and Mark Tapatin doing a live show in one presentation show. Yeah. It should be very interesting, I guess. And don't, don't get too impressed. They'll do anything. They've been on a bogus hangout. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm obviously aware of that and looking forward to it. And uh, uh, we were chatting the other day because we recorded a little mini segment. Yeah, and another thing. Yeah, okay. Google Q and A is is set, and uh, we well out of two more. Uh, uh, search engine is a funny with a Bing we uh, have a pre agreement in principle and the, the, the most difficult one surprise surprise is Yandex well <laughs> I, I always am Russian speaker so for me should be easiest Yandex and but just just can't get them yep no, well it, it's their loss uh, unfortunately we haven't tried Baidu and I'm sure they're not going to be very easy to talk to either but you never know um, but yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to the idea of talking to Bing um, as well uh, because people dismiss Bing. They say, oh, it, it's only a 10% share of the Google audience. Yeah, but when we were starting and we were launching some of the biggest brands you know today, when we were working on those 15 years ago, the whole internet was that 10%. Bing is bigger than the whole internet was back then. And we launched giant companies on this. Google started with a lot smaller audience than Bing has, so you know, don't dismiss it. Ten percent of the internet is still an awful lot, and will keep anybody in business. Yeah, but what about um, you know? The, recently, there was talk about them not actually. They don't seem to communicate very well at all with with webmasters. You know, I think it was Dwayne that pointed out that they don't they don't update their webmaster blog. Um, at Google, just uh, for me, they're really good at actually communicating. Um, and yeah. I, don't know, I just don't, I just don't think they kind of get relationships really that not that well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Mike and then Zara, what are you up to this coming week? You just muted. <laughs> That's what I'm doing this week. <laughs> I'm, I'm zipping up and throwing away the key. No, I. I uh, where Can do I, I give you a list of people that I want you to talk into doing the same? <laughs> I could make a fortune if I could charge with it. Uh, we're doing a little startup, not a little startup, but a startup which we've been working on for about two months, and I've got some early investor meetings this week, two of them, so I've got the executive summary ready, and I'm practicing my spiel, and we'll see how that goes. I give it about a 3% chance of success, but it keeps me busy, and that makes my wife happy. Excellent. Excellent. And may I say, you're looking very distinguished today. That, that shade of red really uh, really does the job. Well, I also have old man makeup on. I was going to ask about that. <laughs> How many of you are wearing makeup? Because I actually use my wife. I was on a Google Hangout. We were recording. <laughs> so I put my wife's makeup on, and I do believe I look 30 years old. But <laughs> any other, who else has old man makeup? Okay, never mind. Right, no, no. I'm just glad I came in. Um, if... if if you believe that you look 30 years old, that's very good for you. I'd book an appointment at the optician tomorrow. 
I'm not alive anymore. So, okay. Okay. Sarah, what are you up to this week? <laughs> I'm, uh, well, I really just started on this book yesterday, and so I'm, I'm going to be setting that up, just running through the whole thing, and I, um, in in dialogue with the author because I have a lot of questions and about how we're going to go about it. I mean, we're we're just at the beginning with that. And um, the other thing that's happening this week is that my son is moving across country to the state of Virginia, and I'm feeling a lot of mommy stuff because it's going to be far away. Yeah, but uh, you know your daughter's been in England for years and years now. She Not has well traveled. Yeah, <laughs> but my daughter and I talk a lot on the phone. He's not a phone person, so it's sons. Yeah, that they can be like that. Yeah. Actually, sometimes when they move away, it's easier to get them to talk. They just don't. Oh, don't he's been away to. before. He's just he's communicative when he's there, and he's non-communicative when he's not there. That's just his personality, you know. So. Oh well, well, that's all we've got time for for this week. Thanks everyone for for joining us, Eleanor. Good to see you, and I'm glad that Aiden was able to drop in as well. See you all next week. Okay.